everyone and welcome to the programmable RGB LED circuit. Now this is an RGB LED, three LEDs in one, red, green and blue, and you can mix the colors in a way to produce any other color in the spectrum. In fact, that's how the device that you're watching this video on works. I presume you're watching this video in color. And the screen that you have has got literally close to a million or more um, RGB LEDs. Now the way we're gonna test this out with different mixes of different colors is we're going to use the analog um, analog right function of the Arduino. Now this can be done also with, with the um, pins on this side. Analog read can only read the analog pins, but analog right can be used on any pin. And what's going to happen is that the voltage um, is going to go, you know, from 1 up to 5 volts. So I'm just going to put this guy in here. I'm going to connect the ground and to connect the ground to the LED, I just need like a cable going there, because that's the G and D pin. Now, these three remaining pins are just red, green, and blue. And to connect them, I'm just going to use the usual 6, 8, and 10 Arduino pins. So, there we go. That's 6, 8, and... That's the circuit. Now let's have a play around with the code. So, here is the pre-written part of the code. I've basically set up the three parts of the RGB module, the red, green, and blue, each connected to one of the Arduino pins. The red's connected to six, green to eight, blue to 10. Um, so those three LEDs are all set up as outputs. We also have here three variables, R, G, and B. So we're going to play around with those in the second part of the tutorial and look at something called iteration. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how it is that the RGB LEDs are used to create different shades of colors. So we use something called analog right. Now you've come across digital right so far. An analog right is much the same with the exception that digital is either on or off. So the pin is either giving 5 volts or 0. Analog, you can supply different voltages out of the pin. So if I say analog right, red, LED, comma. Now if I'm going to give it like half the brightness, um, I would say, oh, it's about 125 out of 255. But let's say we want a really weak red, and like, oh, so that's 30. So if I upload this, we expect to see some red color, and we expect it to be fairly weak. And if we crank this up to 255 and upload, we expect it to get a lot brighter. And it does. So then if I have, instead of one, if I have three of these analog right functions for my three LEDs, red, green, and blue, I should be, in theory, able to create any color. Now, since they're all on, this should be white. And it is. And if I say, get rid of the blue, comment it out, red and green should create yellow. If I get rid of the green, red and blue should create, uh, come on, red and blue should create purple. And if I want to say a different shade of purple, I can make it a bluish shade. I can make red like 60 and then it's going to be a very bluish purple. Yeah. So as you can see, all it takes to create any color in the spectrum is three analog right functions connected to the three pins of an RGB LED. Now this is what happens um, when you're watching this video. Your screen, if it's a 1080p monitor, has over a million RGB LEDs and at a frequency of 60 hertz. So 60 times a second, they're getting brand new values for these three. And that's all that happens when you're watching video, playing video games, or just using your computer. Now, the next thing, and at this stage, the tutorial is just like an open-ended play around, because 
there's an infinite number of things we can do. We're just going to use the aw. Aw equals to aw plus 1. Now this is called iteration. This means that every time this loop is run again, the value of r is going to go up by 1. So to make this visible, I think I'm going to make uh, maybe, maybe 150. So if I say red, the value of red is going to be r, and then I put a delay of something small, like 20 milliseconds, what you're going to see is the value of the red slowly increasing. And so initially you're going to see a mixture of green and blue, and then you're going to see the red going up. And that's because the value of red is going to go up by 1 every time the loop runs. And you can see it. So it starts with this bluish green thing and it moves towards sort of like a reddish white. And we could do this for all three. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write sort of three different iterations for red, green, and blue. I'm going to say green equals to two red, two times red. And I'm going to say blue equals to b plus 2. So it iterates twice as fast. And then we have a problem of what happens when they go over to 55. Well, we can really solve that pretty easily. We can just do three quick if functions and say if um, r is bigger than 255, uh, equals to 0. And we don't need to frame this with the curly brackets, because if you don't use curly brackets, you're only uh, taking the next line as your uh, contingent statement. So if r is bigger than 255, r becomes a zero. So I didn't put a semicolon there, but we can say red, green, blue. Now what this code is going to do is it's going to increase red, green, and blue by three different ratios. And so we're going to create almost every color in the spectrum. The only reason why that may not be the case in here is because my green LED doesn't work with very, very low voltages. So we'll be missing some colors where the green is meant to be really weak. In those colors, green's gonna be off. But nonetheless, um, after I upload this, you're gonna see this kind of cycling color thing that's gonna show you thousands of different colors should be an interesting light show all right i think that's it for now i think you should go ahead and set up the circuit and experiment yourself